Welcome to part two of this VizPy real-time data visualization tutorial. In part one, we left off with a simple GUI that had uh, Qt controls on the left, VizPy visuals on the right. Um, it looks something like this. We were able to pan and zoom thanks to VizPy's pan zoom camera. Uh, we had a separate camera for the image and a separate camera for the uh, line visual. The QT-based controls on the left, we could choose a color map or a line color, but they don't actually do anything. In this video, we're going to try to make them actually control some things. To do that, we need to introduce a new topic, a new concept. To do that, we need to introduce a new concept, QT signals and slots. So QT signals and slots are specific to the QT GUI framework. Um, there are other frameworks that do something similar, but since we're using PyQt5 in these examples, that's what we're using. These signals and slots allow you to communicate information between two, um, two parts of your application. So if we have a Q object one on uh, the left and we want to communicate some type of information to Q object two, let's say, uh, maybe some color information or any other type of new data and we want to get it to this other object we would use signals and slots so if we want to communicate this color or data information our second object has to have some kind of method for using that new information so in this case maybe a set color or set data method and then we can use the signals from Q object one this new color new data and connect them to the slots the color and data. One key point in this is that um, in our code, a lot of the time, both of these objects will be Q object subclasses. Um, the class that holds the signal, that has the signal on it, must be a Q object subclass. Um, if you wanted to use Qt signals in your own application that wasn't Qt based or uh, was maybe uh, more involved, you would have to have some kind of wrapper around your non-QT based uh, classes or objects. Um, because QT is managing all of the signals for us, the, um, the transmission from one object to another, uh, the object has to be a Q object subclass. So in our example script that we're working on, we have our my main window main window and inside that we have the controls that those are the qt based um, drop down menus on the left pane and that had a color map combo box and a line color combo box we want to communicate the information that those are giving us to our uh, vizpy image visual and line visual those right now live inside a canvas wrapper object so that's a regular class and uh, what we're going to try to do is take built-in signals that come with that come built into the Q combo box class from PyQt5 and connect those to some method in our canvas wrapper so that we can communicate that information to our image and line visuals. So let's uh, get into the code and see if we can make this work. So back into our script, we have our my, my main window. We have the controls. But we're going to start out with the canvas wrapper and we're going to add some uh, methods for um, changing the values of our image and of our line based on the uh, information we're going to get from the QT based controls. So we're going to add a set image color map class or function. Inside here, just for our own debugging, we're going to add a print statement. And then we're going to assign this to our image visual, which has a CMAP property that we can set to a string. So the image visual we made up here, visuals.image. Um, and we are assigning to the property here. We'll do something similar for the line visual. Oops. We'll do 
another print statement. I'm using f strings here to simplify some of the the code so that I'm not typing too much. So for the line, instead of a property, we're going to call the set data method. And we're going to assign a new color by name. So we've made these methods, but we're not actually being they're not actually being used yet. What we need to do is go up to our uh, main window and we're going to um, tell our controls to connect their signals to our canvas wrapper, our, our new canvas wrapper methods. Just to keep this a little um, organized, I'm going to make a new method. Let's call it connect controls. I'm going to say underscore controls color map chooser. So that's the combo box object that we made um, in our controls class. So uh, right here, qt widgets dot q combo box. Built into that class, pyqt gives us a current text changed signal. And all signals have a connect method. And what this does is uh, we provide this some kind of callable, a, a method or a function that will be called uh, when this signal is emitted. Um, this particular signal, current text changed, as the name suggests, will be emitted anytime the text or, or anytime the, the value changes in the combo box. So we're going to connect it to that new method that we made, set image color map on our canvas wrapper. Note that I'm passing the method itself. I'm not calling the method. If I put parentheses around this, uh, at the end of this, that would be calling the method. We don't want to do that. Um, that would return some value. Well, in this case, none. Um, having the parentheses is calling the method, and we don't want to do that. We want to pass the method itself um, to this connect method. Uh, in addition to connecting the color map, we want to also connect to the lines or the line color. So the line color chooser is the other combo box that we made. It also has a current text changed signal. And we're going to connect that to our new set line color method. Again, no parentheses at the end there because we don't want to call the method. We want to pass the method itself. So now we created this connect controls. We have to actually call this. All right, that should be it. Let's see what happens when we run this. Okay, so we're still able to pan and zoom. Let's try changing the color map. And there we go. Uh, and we can see in my um, execution my run output it says changing image color map to reds so that's what we expect the our, our new methods are getting the color of the color map that is configured into um, these controls let's put this back the default let's double check that the line color also changes yep changes red and blue and that's good to go so what we did here is we connected uh, two pieces of our code. We had the controls and we had our um, VizPy canvas wrapper. We used the higher level class, the my main window, to connect signals from controls to the methods or slots on the canvas wrapper, and those handled the communication with, uh, with the VizPy visuals to update the information or update the properties of those visuals. So one last thing we're going to do here is clean up the code a little bit. Um, I noticed while working on this that we're uh, repeating some things. So let's make a global constant for all of the color maps that we want to use. So let's call this color map choices. And then we need to use this with 
when we create our combo box. The reason why that's important is that we also need to choose a color map when we create our image. So by default, the combo box is going to show the first item that you add to it. So in this case, uh, index zero of the color map choices. Uh, we just want to make sure that our, um, our image is in sync with what our UI is going to create. We can do the same thing for the line colors. accidentally deleted an S. Okay, and then we want to also change when we create our line that the color that it's choosing is the first option. All right, let's run this one more time just to make sure that it's still working. All right, so that concludes part two. In the next part, we will dive into updating the actual data that is being displayed by these visuals. Um, so, so far we've been uh, sticking with static data. It hasn't changed. We create image data once and um, it never changes. Same thing for the line. We're creating random line data at the beginning and never changing it. Uh, part three, we'll dive into uh, using um, updating data sources and dealing with the synchronization of that data source updating in one place and wanting to use it in another place without interrupting the user's interaction with our GUI. So that's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one.